We've created a list of 12 books you need to ask Santa for this Christmas. Let's check them out. Guys, thanks so much for tuning in once again. I've got a very special guest here today. This is my wife, Sarah. She has her own channel geared towards all you mommies out there called Cup of Practicality. I highly suggest that you head on over and check that out right away. So we're gonna dive right in. We've each selected six books, three that we've read and would like to recommend, and then three that we would like to read that we thought you guys might want to read with us or something. <laughs> the first book I'd like to bring to the table is called Steelheart. It's the first book in the Reckoners series written by Brandon Sanderson. If you're into superheroes battling supervillains and the underdog coming in to save the day, you are absolutely going to love this series. The superpowered individuals in the Reckoners series are called epics. And the interesting thing about them is that when they use their superpowers, they're driven further and further towards being evil. So their powers really kind of make them almost lose control. The main character in the book is bent on uh, bringing down Steelheart, who is- The bad guy? The big bad guy. And his super, his one of, one of his superpowers, besides being like almost completely indestructible, is he can turn things to steel. Steelheart. Steelheart, yeah. Got it. That's a pretty BA name for like a hero or a villain, you have to admit. You gotta pick up Steelheart, The Reckoners, number one. So the very first book that I want to recommend to you guys is a book called Sarah's Key. It's by Tatiana de Rosne, and it takes place in France in July of 1942. I am all about World War II fiction, and this book blew my socks off. So it follows a woman who comes across this information of a roundup of Jews back in World War II, so this 10 year old girl locks her little brother in a secret hiding place to keep him safe when the police come to round up her family. And it follows her survival story. It kept me on the edge of my seat. I wanted to know what was coming next. It was different than ev any other World War II work of fiction that I've ever um, read before. It was amazing. I couldn't put it down. And if you are into historical fiction, World War II, it was amazing. Definitely. Next on my list is a book called Ready Player One. Uh, by Ernest Klein. I literally had moments where I was laughing out loud. It is so much fun, especially if you're a giant nerd like me. <laughs> if you can't tell by my book suggestions, literally like every single one just... This one's about superheroes, <laughs> and this one's about a video game about superheroes. <laughs> it follows the main character, Wade, in the year 2044 who's living in what's called the Stacks. And the Stacks are literally poor communities and uh, cities, everywhere has become so overpopulated that they started taking mobile homes and just stacking them on top of each other. Wade, to escape his kind of crappy life, uh, dives into a virtual environment that's completely immersive. What ends up happening is the creator of this massive virtual world dies, but he leaves a message to everybody uh, on the planet stating, if you can find the secret clues I've hidden throughout this game, you will become the sole proprietor of everything that I've built. This book is chock full of 1980s pop culture references, which I think I read, I was reading some reviews and some people were annoyed by it. I actually found it super entertaining. It, it was such a fun read, you guys. I think they're also working on um, a live action movie uh, adaptation of this book. So this would be a great time for you to pick it up mm -hmm. and read it. Super cool, highly suggested. All right, my second recommendation is for all of you who enjoy Call the Midwife. The series is based off of a book called Call the Midwife by Jennifer Worth. Uh, the book is a memoir of Jennifer's time in post-war London in the 1950s. So Jenny joins a group of nuns and their work in the East End of London 
taking care of poor, destitute people. And if you've never seen the show, the characters are so endearing. And I usually recommend reading a book before you watch a show or a movie, but the fact that I had already seen the show and then picked up the book really gave me a love of the characters before I even opened the front page. I am so in love with every single character in the book and it really, the book gave me more of a, an in-depth look at the work that they did with the patients. The way that it's written, it was it's like you are there in the room as these babies are being born and as um, these patients are kind of sharing their troubles and their... Um... So if you love stories about women, about babies, about London, about uh, 1950s, anything like that, definitely pick up this book. It's an awesome read. It was great. My third suggested book is by Ted Decker. Ted Decker is an incredible suspense, action, thriller, mystery writer, and he composed a series called The Circle Series, the first of those books called Black, The Birth of Evil. So the unique thing about Black for me is that this is the book that got me addicted to books. I did a video previously talking about this. I'll link to it so you can check that out if you want to. Black follows the character of Thomas Hunter who gets himself into some trouble and he finds himself being shot at by I think it's the Mafia. He ends up getting knocked unconscious and when he wakes up, he wakes up in this completely alternate reality where there's these beautiful like shimmering forests and these like gorgeous emerald lakes um, and things are just dramatically different. The kicker is whenever he goes to sleep in either reality, he wakes up in the other. Thomas uncovers a plot to release in his own reality a deadly plague upon all of humanity and there's only one company that holds the vaccine for this plague. So Thomas goes about trying to stop this. Um, he tries to stop it by interacting in both realities. I'm telling you, this book is amazing. There were moments in this book that touched me so deeply that I was literally weeping. You have to, above every other book that I list today, you need to check out Black by Ted Decker. So my last recommended book, which is a little bit of a cheat because I'm actually still in the process of finishing it. This book is called Threading My Prayer Rug by Sabiha Rahman. She is a Pakistani woman who is a Muslim American. This was definitely a step outside of the box of the type of books that I normally read, but it has opened my eyes so much. As a Christian woman, I normally read Christian fiction or Christian nonfiction, and that tends to be the lens through which I see my world. And I have been convicted a lot lately about how narrow-minded that can make me. And I, when I picked up this book, I was so inspired by the similarities between her life and mine, her religion and my religion, her viewpoint, her culture and my culture. In a lot of ways, our cultures are so different, but reading this book has really shown me the, the continuity in the life of people of faith and of differing faiths. It follows her story starting in Pakistan when she was young, the way she grew up, following her arranged marriage, which has shown itself to be 40 some odd years with this man who she is in love with now, um, how her story of raising her children in America and coming to terms with her Muslim faith in the light of American culture and also how her faith has changed in light of 9-11 and a lot of the stereotypes and judgments that her, um, her faith has kind of come under attack from. It's an awesome book. 
um, it really is a refreshing view on American life and Muslim faith and um, it's amazing. I would recommend this to everyone, no matter what your faith is, no matter what your beliefs are, um, no matter what types of books you like to read, it's amazing, especially coming from the perspective of a woman and a mother. Um, it's an awesome read, definitely recommended, pick it up. Here are some books that we haven't read yet, but we really, really would like to. We thought you'd like to know about them too, so we're gonna read a little bit of the synopsis of each. Here we go. So the first book on my to read list is called Before We Were Yours by Lisa Wingate. Based on one of America's most notorious real life scandals in which Georgia Tan, director of a Memphis based adoption organization, kidnapped and sold poor children to wealthy families all over the country. Lisa Wingate's riveting, wrenching, and ultimately uplifting tale reminds us how even though the paths we take can lead to many places, the heart never forgets where we belong. All right, the first book on my to-read list is called Silver, and it's part of the Ogmios team series. It's written by Stephen Savior. A religious cult calling itself the Disciples of Judas has risen in the Middle East. They twist the word of ancient prophecies to drive home the fear. Everything you believe in will be proved wrong. Everything you hold true will fail. Day by day, the West wakes to increasingly harrowing acts of terror. As fear cripples the capitals of Europe, the only question is, where will be the next to fall? In a race against time, believing the terrorists intend to assassinate the Pope, Sir Charles Wyndham's unique special ops team, codenamed Ogmios track a labyrinth course through truth, shades of truth, and outright lies that takes them from the back streets of London to the shadow of Checkpoint Charlie in Berlin and all the way into the heart of the Holy See itself. Da -da -da -da. So the next book that I really want to read is a Christian parenting self-help book. It's called Triggers, Exchanging Parents' Angry Reactions for Gentle Biblical Responses by Amber Leah and Wendy Speak. Do you believe your struggle with anger stems from the wrong behavior you see displayed in your children? The knee-jerk reactions and blow-ups you're facing are often a result of a bigger set of triggers. This book examines common parenting issues that cause us to explode inappropriately at our children. Moving beyond simple parenting tips on how to change your child's behavior, authors Amber Leah and Wendy Speak offer biblical insight and practical tools to equip and encourage you on the journey away from anger-filled reactions toward gentle biblical responses. I am also very excited about this book, especially because we parent uh, a child with ADHD. Um, I am a parent with ADHD, so we've been facing some real challenges, and the thought of digging into this book and really kind of being able to peel back the layers on, quite frankly, a lot of the frustration um, and the outbursts that we deal from ourselves and just trying to figure out what the heck works. All right, I'm very excited about this next one. I am a huge steampunk fan. This book is called The Falling Machine, The Society of Steam. It's written by Andrew P. Mayer. This new steampunk series opens in 1880 when women aren't allowed to vote, much less dress up in a costume and fight crime. More crime fighting. Freaking love it. But 20 year old socialite Sarah Stanton still dreams of becoming a hero. Her opportunity arrives in tragedy when the leader of the Society of Paragons, New York's greatest team of gentlemen adventurers, is murdered right before her eyes. I just love that it says gentlemen adventurers. <laughs> it makes me think that all of them wear top hats, capes, and have handlebar mustaches. To uncover the truth behind the assassination, Sarah joins forces with the amazing mechanical man known as the Automaton. Together they unmask a conspiracy at the heart of the Paragons that reveals the world of heroes and high society is built on a crumbling foundation of greed and lies. When Sarah comes face to face with the megalomaniacal villain behind the murder, she must discover if she has the courage to sacrifice her life of privilege and save her clockwork friend. This book sounds so freaking awesome. 
So the next book that I want to read is The Magnolia Story by Chip and Joanna Gaines. Are you ready to see your fixer upper? These famous words are now synonymous with the dynamic husband and wife team Chip and Joanna Gaines. The Magnolia Story is the first book from Chip and Joanna, offering their fans a detailed look at their life together. From the very first renovation project they ever tackled together, to the project that nearly cost them everything. From the childhood memories that shaped them, to the twists and turns that led them to the life they share on the farm today. <clears throat> the last book I'd like to recommend to you is called The Thirteenth Reality. It's written by James Dashner, who you might recognize as the author of the Maze Runner series. I was going to say that. I was going to say that. Yeah. What if every time you made a choice that had a significant consequence, a new alternate reality was created. The life that would have been. What if those new realities were in danger? What if it were up to you to save all the realities, and in turn, the entire universe? They have the first two books bound under one cover. I actually already own this. So the 13th reality, James Dasher, go pick it up. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. We hope you enjoy the books that we've talked about today. Take a moment to like and subscribe if you don't want to miss out on any content. Make sure to hit the little bell. I appreciate you, and I'll talk to you again soon. Deuces!